Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. I'm out here in Belleville, Texas at our LP hole home and I'm getting attacked by wasps. Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. I'm out here in Belleville, Texas at our LP farmhouse and I wanted to show you a few details on the foundation really quick. So, this is what we did on our foundation. We put our vertical piles are these are helical piles that we have driven into the ground each one of these gives us 70,000 pounds of downward force I'm going to be coming back in here and adding a plate to attach this plate here onto our LVL here and I'll be welding through these plug holes to get everything connected all the way down into the ground so welds here here plate here weld there and bolts back into my beam then we have our uh, our high performance legacy subflooring on top of that and then we have our um, bottom plate LSL on top of this so here is a little bit more detailed view this is our beam LVL is a laminated veneer lumber so laminated mean we've got these laminations you can count them there there's one two three four a bunch of them across here they're veneers so they're real thin strips and all the grains are running this way this gives us the most um the most load capacity in this angle as this thing's being loaded this top side here is coming into tension and the bottom sorry the top side is coming into compression and the bottom side is being pulled in tension and then you have your neutral axis here the reason why it's oriented to where the grains are going this way is because that's the strongest um the with the grain growth is the strongest orientation of wood so by doing that we can create a stronger beam out of the laminate the laminated wood than what actual real wood can be we can also use more of the tree because we're shaving thin sheets like this we're not looking for a tree that's at least 12 inches in diameter so i can use smaller trees and get the same strength out of this board without waiting for old growth wood i can harvest young growth and have sustainable forests so this is a big deal about the engineered wood is its sustainability looking over here i have got a, an eye joist and i've got the um, dimensional lumber up top and down low this again if we're loading it in this direction and have it supported from either end this is in compression this is in tension and our web here can be smaller because all it's all it's withstanding is shear now this is called osb oriented strand board because i have got strands that's this thing right here is a strand of wood and it's oriented in such a in such a way that gives us a major strength axis and a minor strength axis and then on top of this we have our subfloor this is legacy subfloor and it's an engineered wood product subfloor again it's oriented strand board so you see all these strands through here sort of looks a little bit like our LVL but you see the veneers we have in we have distinct veneers that run um, not the length but run for a long ways down this beam here we just have strands so we can use a lot more of the tree here we can shred the tree up and get these strands but this isn't just a shredder it's not making mulch it's super precise on how long the strands are as well as the orientation of the strands we have a strong axis on this here let me see you see that board there we have a strength axis running this way so this board is stiffer in that kind of bending motion than it is in this kind of bending motion and the way that they do that is the strands the majority of the strands are running in this direction and then they'll bias it off a little bit and give some of the strands running back this direction to give it some strength in this uh the minor strength axis but the majority of the strength in the major strength axis so how you put these down and how you load them makes a difference and the manufacturer is very clear on how you install any 
um, OSB product, any orient oriented strain board product, because the strength axis makes a difference on how you put them together. Now, we don't just slap this on here and nail through it. No, we put a subfloor glue in between our beams and our joists and our subfloor. So we add glue here and back in here on top and then put our subfloor on top of that. Now, the APA gives a very clear definition, and I'll link to that below, a very clear guideline on their glued floor system, and that's what we followed on this, and we glued it on, this is the bottom, let's say, the bottom of the OSB, bottom of the OSB, but you'll notice here on these gaps, right there, you see how that gap, we've got at least an eighth inch gap all the way down, and at every interface. That's really important because as this board expands and contracts with weather, we don't want this thing to lip up. When the two edges push together, they'll want to push each other up if there's contact there. So we want to leave that little gap there and that allows the board to expand and contract without giving us any type of lippage between the boards or trying to pull the nails out and result in nail popping. Um, the way that we do this quickly is the LP Legacy product actually gives us this tongue and groove profile that I glue here and I put in there, I put the tongue in the groove and then you notice when my tongue and my groove is set, I have this gap that's already installed and calibrated to the right thickness. So that is a very quick tutorial on how we did the raised floor on this from just a structural wood product standpoint. There's a whole lot more details that I'll get into on how we're insulating this, how we're air sealing this, how we're making sure that we don't have moisture or air coming up from our crawl space and how we keep our crawl space well ventilated because this will be a ventilated attic. It will not be a sealed and, I said attic, it will be a ventilated crawl space. It will not be a sealed and conditioned crawl space. So we want lots and lots of air to go under the house and keep all that humidity out, but we don't want the air cooling the bottom side of our floor or bringing in moisture on a cold condensing surface where we can get condensation and all kinds of other bad stuff that would totally be bad. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. We're going to do a lot more on this house in a lot more detail and get into all of the nitty gritty, but this is just a quick, fast overview of what we did on top of those piles because I know a lot of you have been looking for, okay, so what's the next step? We're busy building it, so I don't have time to film all the time, but we will slow down and take really good detailed install shots. In fact, LP's coming down here with Kyle from RR Buildings, and they're going to be filming with us, and we're going to do really in-depth cool stuff. So stay tuned for that. Comment below with any questions that you have, any tips and suggestions on when we're shooting this, what kind of details you want to see. Subscribe if we've earned it. Go follow us over at our social media pages, at Jordan Smith Builds on Instagram, at Smith House at Instagram, uh, smithhouseco.com. When it's up and running, we'll be over there too. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Smith House.